previously on Spirit Hunter Deathmark. And Mary just sits there, staring at me. Hey, you gonna you gonna do something? You gonna do something about that ghost? Hey, you gonna 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 do something? Anything? You just gonna sit here all day, sleep in bed, eat all my chocolates? Hey! Hey! I'm strategizing, okay? Those chocolates help me think. Sure, sure, okay. You just keep telling yourself that, Brosif. I'm the one who has something to buy that shit by the fucking gross off Amazon every fucking day! You don't need to eat 40 of them at a time, Lord Yashiki! I told you it helps me think! And now back to being demonetized. Sneak B! Back with some more Spirit Hunter Deathmark. When we last left off, well, Chrissy, it looks like it's just you and me now. Waiting to die. Again. Yeah, I know what I was saying. I was gonna, I wanted to die earlier, but I, I don't really want to do that anymore. So let's go find a ghost to kill. Cool, let's go do that. Mary, you're coming with us. Cool. Let's road trip. Yeah, road trip. I'm gonna go for a walk outside now. So Chad's calling my name. There's a payphone over there. And we come across a giant weeaboo and a little girl, which definitely doesn't feel suspicious in any way, who tell us the legend of Hanayoma, a woman that was brutally killed on her wedding day or in her wedding dress. Dog also killed, pictures taken of her and spread around the world, leaving only an angry, vengeful spirit, who will also occasionally help you if you just don't tell her that you saw it. You know, the thing that she doesn't want you to see. Don't do that. Otherwise, this will happen. <coughs> Dead. Yeah, I definitely would say this one out of all the ghost stories so far is probably the most disturbing and just sad. I mean, granted, Hanahe Ghost was also quite sad, but this one just felt insanely, unnecessarily kind of cruel. But anyway, together with our new uh, set of mark bearers, we have uh, entered a secret part of the woods guided by the apparent dead dog of Hanayoma, who also tries to kill us at one point, but it's okay. He was a good boy. He just did it out of love. I actually wonder if this story in particular is based on anything, you know, any kind of like a uh, horror or or trope of some kind, because this one feels kind of different from the other two. I don't know, more unique, but it might be a reference to something I just haven't heard of before. She really does remind me of the uh, something queen from Bloodborne that she also had, was like basically in a wedding dress and like had blood where she'd like given birth to a child and her child died. By the way, you guys could also tell me that <laughs> Uh, if I go for the, uh, the bad, you know, the bad ending or going for killing somebody else again, I should make sure to have a uh, little girl. What's her name again? Suzu? Yeah, Suzu. Uh, have her with me when I do it. Ugh, God damn it. I, to be honest, I wasn't really planning to do any more of those. I was really going to try my best to, to just get it right each time. I mean, I'd, I'd watch it if I did unintentionally kill them, like, you know, blow up the, the ghost, then I'd watch it. But I wasn't really planning to intentionally do it. I kind of get the idea. Every every time you do it, your partner's going to die in a horrible way. And somehow, I, I don't really know if I want to see the little girl die in some horrible, like, fucked up way like this. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I'll, I'm going to try to just get the good one. But if I end up getting the bad one, we'll watch it. How about, how about that? I don't know if I can just bring myself to intentionally like, all right, I'm ready to see something really fucked. We did it once. I get I get the idea, but well, I, I think right now I'm going to try to avoid it. Unless it's something you just guys absolutely feel like I fucking got to see. You're like, man, I just got to fucking go up so badly. I just can't wait to see him get messed up from this shit. But anyway, last episode, uh, Diggory Talbot 3025 said, Great beard of Zeus. Those nails on the tree look like the work of the nail man. <laughs> What really gets this comment, what makes this one good is the first part. The great beard of Zeus <laughs> by Zeus's beard. <laughs> That's the part that really got me. But I, I mean, the, the rest is good too. But just that part right there is enough to like seal this one for me. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Diggory Talbot. Those nails on the tree we saw earlier do look like the nail man. That freaking killer that we came across in that, in that case that I'm not going to spoil here. Is that it again? We need to stop him or her. Better call Yuma Chocolate Fountain to get to work on it. Yeah, call me. I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. Me, the... Wait, what did he call me? Nothing. Get, 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 get out of here. All right. But Diggory, thank you so much for your uh, hilarious comment by Zeus's beard. And it's that reason you are comment of the day. But anyway, uh, we're in the middle of the woods. We got past the little doggy dude. And I imagine we're probably done with it for now. I, I don't know. I think we sort of... Uh, we managed to figure out his name. 
Which, by the way, that was uh, the the letter that was on his name was actually part of the Greek alphabet. So I was just completely wrong there. I was like, what is that, Russian? <laughs> I actually don't know if we've technically gotten to the part that we're like going to confront Hanayome or Hanayoma. If it's going to be like in this section or if there's going to be another like break in between. I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, let's continue in the woods here. Deeper. Oh, that's nice. I sound like a rope creaks above my head. I really got to stop playing this game at night. Silhouette so swinging the shadow of the trees. My whole body shudders with dread. What are they, fucking crash dummies or something? Are, are those people? Susa gives a terrified yelp. Speechless, I shine my flashlight on them. They clearly aren't people. They're mannequins. The things hanging by their necks from the trees are display mannequins you can find in any department store. The fuck? Obviously dolls can't commit suicide. Is this someone's idea of a prank? Maybe a warning to intruders? The only one who knows the truth would be whoever did this. Let's go. I don't think they're dangerous. They're only mannequins. Okay. Susan replies uneasily. But before either of us could take a step forward, I feel a shaky hand gripping onto me. No, what? Shaky hand? Where? Or, was that her? Was it Suzu? The doll swing unceasingly from the ropes, even though there is no breeze. A male doll hanging from a tree. I wonder what the person who did this was thinking. The doll's mercy hanging by its neck. It has something in its left hand. Grabbing onto it to stop it from swaying, open the hand and take what's inside. Hey, all right. I think I actually really need that. I think I'm already, like, kind of damaged. Yeah, there we go. Uh, anything else going on here? There's a lot of them, too, man. Look, I'm fucking floating back there. Um. Okay, we're actually about to hit the end here. What the fuck do you want now? Hey, it's that dog! <laughs> Call Leon! Suzu, be careful. No, it's okay now. It won't attack anymore. It's that dog from before. It starts digging in the dirt right in front of us. Now he knows that we're good people, alright? So he's, he's probably going to try to help us to save Hanayoma. After a few moments, he disappears like mist. What was it doing? Is there something over there? Let's take a look. First, let me check around here real quick. Make sure there's not any ghosties. All right. This place where that dog was digging. Upon closer inspection, the dirt there appears to be a different color. I reach out and touch the dirt, but the texture under my hand surprises me. The dirt around here is soft. Almost as if something was buried. Better be a fucking body. Give me a hand. Hey, your little girl, you ever seen a dead body before? Going to take here? I don't think we'll need any tools. Please. Uh, okay. In silence, we kneel in the forest in the middle of the night. Dig up the dirt with our hands. I feel like I'm robbing a grave. It could be that those words popped in my head because I somehow knew what we'd find. Distracted. Ah. I looked down at what we dug up. Got weird little centipedes on it. What we find is a corpse. It's just a skeleton now, but it doesn't look that old. I is that a corpse? Yeah, see, I told you. Yeah. My reply sounds flat and uncaring, even to me. At some point, Death has become familiar. That fact, and not the corpse, is what sends a shiver down my spine. I'm too comfortable with the world of the dead. I know this, but I can't escape it. One part of me observes the remains for us and reacts calmly. Just then I notice something. What's that? There's something white in the skeleton's hand. I dig it out and discover it's a plastic bag. 
Inside are a number of cassette tapes and some kind of note. The notes deteriorated, but part of it are legible. Parts of it are legible. I killed them all once, assault you. Now you rest in peace. Oh, this is, um, this is the musician, uh, that's, that, uh, Hanayama was going to get married to, right? I, what needed to be done, now I die here. This forest, you passed away. New song, want, listen, heaven. Yeah, this one, I feel like this one's making it pretty obvious what I have to do to actually, to save her. The note ends there. Three cassette tapes. It sounds like a suicide note, doesn't it? But these tapes. She looks at the cassette tapes. Why were they buried too? They look at the remains as if asking them the question. Of course, it's not going to reply. I don't know. I trail off. A different voice is whispering in my mind. The last. The voice falls silent. The last? Wait a second. The last what? Huh? Is something the matter? I didn't say anything. All these voices inside of my head! It's nothing. Sorry, just talking to myself. Anyway, let's take these tapes with us. Unidentified suicide victim. Alright, so we came across some, some like, cassette tape back at, um, that tree, too. Let's see. So, tape, charm song. An old cassette tape found buried with a corpse in this forest. It had been wrapped in a plastic bag, so it's in good shape and should be playable. The words charm song can be read on the smudged label. Echo ballad, my. My, is it like, supposed to be like one thing? My charm echo ballad song. <laughs> we find a skeleton buried in the ground with a worm, a worn suicide note in cassette tapes. Certainly enough, the contents of the note match up with the rumors of the fiance's death and what was in the uh, in that other note. That's just a guess, but if I'm right, the songs in these tapes probably contain his thoughts and feelings. If the corpse is a fiance, then the tapes may have songs he made, he made or ones that are meaningful to them. So then what was the, what was the, the whisper of the last trying to tell me? Did he want his fiance to hear the last song? The dog that guided us is definitely the ruined form of their beloved pet. If I can manage to connect all this together when I face Hanayomai. Okay, time to turn around. Don't have a demon behind me. Ah, fuck. The mark burned scarlet. Half an hour left. Okay, no, this is it. We're definitely, this is definitely it. <laughs> I have nowhere my mark flares up painfully. The intense pulsing sets my... My nerves on fire. Shit. Are we out of time? I bite my lip and look at Suzu. 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 Hey. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Yeah. It's finally here. It all starts now. I grab Suzu and run. Spirit is closing in on us. Get to the car. I get in the car to go some somewhere. Regardless, I'm here inside it, gripping the wheel. The mansion. I need to go back there for now. I glance at the rear view mirror of Susan in the back seat. Susan is staring vaguely out the window with a slightly tilted head. The only thing out there is darkness. There's nothing to look at. Ida's tape player is laying on its side in the passenger seat. Good thing we decided he decided to bring that along. I grab from the back means to play one of those tapes. We could only arrive at Kujo Mansion. Even if I discuss it with Mary, it's probably best to listen to a tape first. I reach for one, but as I do, I know something odd. What the fuck? Wh where are we? I'm on an unfamiliar road, like I took a wrong turn somewhere. No, it's not unfamiliar. I've clearly been down this road before. But the route I was taking should have ha had no way for me to come across this road. It's the only way I can describe it. It's impossible. C calm down. I must have made a mistake because I was messing around with the tape player. Would get lost on the way to the mansion. I've been to it so many times now. 
I just missed the first intersection and ended up somewhere strange. That's all. That's what I tell myself as I make a U-turn. But no matter how many times I go back... Damn it! Why am I here again? No matter how I churn, I end up on the same road. Right? Left? Or keep going straight? I still return to the exact same place. This is ridiculous! I hate the steering wheel. Maybe it was because of my outburst, but my mark starts burning with pain again. This is bad. Really bad. At this rate, death will catch up to us while we're in here in the car. Having said that, we can't go back to the mansion. I don't think we'll be able to get out of this maze no matter how many times I try. In that case, what should I do? Where should I drive? To A Highway, to T Apartments, to T Mountain. I turned the steering wheel in the direction of the place that popped in my head. T Mountain. It's not that I have to go there. The destination is important as long as it gets me out of this situation. I hit the gas pedal and abruptly turn the wheel, trying to get out of this cursed trap. Finally, familiar scenery returns as if laying in wait for me. Back to this fucking place. In the end, we're back here. Pick up the goddamn phone! The phone is ringing. I know exactly who's calling. Ah, bacon! Marcus died a deep crimson. A few minutes left until death was in. I head to the phone booth. Got eyes radio cassette player in the back holding Seiko's memories of Breath Etheretti. Damn, we're just hopping right into this shit, aren't we? I pick up the receiver, but the phone immediately goes dead. Oh, fuck. Ew, ugh. Is that like an eyeball in her mouth? Live or die. Uh. You stop. Didn't you? I know. You saw it. Throw something. Hit her with the tape player. Take a picture with the camera. Take a picture with the camera. I quickly grab the instant camera and use the flash. Didn't like that. Spear shrieks and while it's distracted, I tumble out of the booth. Alright! Once out, I spawn out of the corner of my eye. Spear's standing there, looking down at me. The camera's battery is dead. What should I do next? Uh, I think we gotta go. I think we gotta go in order here. Play my. I stick mine to the tape player and press the play button. I don't know this one. Spear responds to the song. Spear quietly drifts closer. What should I do next? My. Charm. Stick charm song into the play player and press the play. Listen often. Spear responds to the song. Spear quietly drifts closer. Okay. Echo Ballad. I stick Echo Ballad to the tape player and press the play button. <laughs> Spear responds to the song. Oh gosh, she's getting right in my grill. Uh, ooh. Ooh, she's got eyes. 
inside her mouth and then like two really weird bulges. Ugh. Spirit is right in front of me. Let me listen to the newest. Uh. This one. I stick mine to the tape player and press the play button. Yes, that song was finished. A dog comes bounding over from somewhere, barking, barking happily. Ken, is this where you've been? Come on, let's go. He's waiting. Interesting. This one actually was very different from all the other ones. Interesting. Yeah, that was much more straightforward than the other ones. It was actually instead of being like a like a battle thingy, it was actually like the the live or die situation. So how do you even? I don't even know how you would even uh, blow her up then, or even get like technically the bad one for this one. What did I do? Just play the wrong song? I feel like I would just be me dying though. I actually have no idea. How would you get it? There's a flash of light. I blink and the spirit is gone. Wow, all right. Damn. I didn't realize I was going to end that soon here. I don't sense Hanayoma anymore, anymore. She's gone now. Hanayome. Suzu's back to normal. I bet their mark's gone. But mine isn't. But mine's still bright on my arm. God damn, doodly. Guess Hanayome didn't give me my mark after all. Then Hanayome... Really was sick, Ohasagawa. What a sad, terrible fate, turning into a ghost after she died. I feel so sorry for her. This place isn't too far from where Sicko died. Maybe that's why. The instant Hanayomi vanished, I thought I caught a glimpse of her loyal dog. Hope her dog and the song her fiancé wrote for her help her be a peace in heaven. So yeah, she said that, which was the newest, it was the one that she didn't recognize at all, right? Should we head back? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Huh? The phone starts ringing out of nowhere. Or is it over? It won't stop. It's like it's waiting for someone to answer. What should I do? Picking it up. Hello? Um... On the other end of the line is the gentle voice of a woman. I'm so very sorry for causing you so much trouble. Please, excuse me. Aw. Is that a wrong number or something? I was a little panicked, but now I relax. I step out of the booth and get into the car with Susu. Yeah, funny. I'm not even sure actually how you would fail that one. Actually, I'm actually really... Because I really didn't have any other options there. And I think the other options to other songs I would have played would have just led to my death. In reality, I didn't end up even using any of my, like... Actually, I can't even look at it. My, my items. My other items I have. Welcome back, Mr. Yoshiki. It's thanks to you that my mark is finally gone. Too bad I didn't get to do much. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get to do shit, you fucking fat weeaboo bitch. I read a ton of comics about exorcism, so I thought I could help. Good job to you, Suzu. Too, Suzu. Everything went okay? Yeah, it's all thanks to him. Uh, oh, yeah? I bet I could have done a better job than him. Shut up! Fucking no, you couldn't, Ida. You sort of sat there and jacked off some hentai. I waited your return, Lord Ishiki. It appears that you overcame your fear and cleared away the grudge. Yeah, I don't even know how I would have blown her up, honestly, Mary. Yeah, me neither. Congratulations. I thought it is unfortunate that your mark has not yet vanished. Yeah, you know, just three would have been a weird number, right? I managed to defeat three spirits now, but Marcus still hasn't disappeared. Feels like that terrible fact might just freeze the blood in my veins. But I vowed to fight against the mark. 
All I can do now is press forward. I do wonder which one it will be, right? Like, what spirit will be the end-all, be-all spirit? Hmm, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be something tied closely to him, you know, in some way. Mr. Shiki, may I have a word? I looked through the other files in the garage after you left, and I found this. She hands over a file that says H Shrine Findings on the cover. Saya Kujo's signature is in the corner. The Kujo family's guardians were housed there, so it makes sense that this was here. Go on, read it. Most of it is about how each shrine was built in its history. It lines up with what Mary told us. Everything that happened from the anti-Buddhist movement to, to now is in here. But it looks like even Saya didn't know who stole the statues 50 years ago. Some pages about each shrine's Go Shintai, the item that houses the deity spirit. The shrine has two, a mirror and a small Buddha statue called Ninjibutsu. The Ninjibutsu should be in a brocade, brocade pouch, but I never saw anything like that at the shrine. Wonder where it ended up. The last few pages contains notes on an investigation to the stolen statues. Which is a rumor that started circulating a few months ago. Kamiyamachi North Road in H City. It's a back street that, due to the city's poor planning, is covered in manholes. Because of that, people call it Manhole Road. What the hell? That's a lot of manholes, bro! Seems a bit excessive. On a moonless night, a young woman was walking down it on her way from home from work. An old sign said, Be wary of strangers. Suddenly fearful, she attempted to hurry her steps down that dimly lit back street. But she couldn't take a step forward. A noise, something heavy being dragged, and then a figure was discernible from out of the darkness. It was a woman with disheveled hair, wearing a burnt white robe. She cradled a headless Buddha statue as if it were her own child. The shadows and hair hid most of the face but she could see her blood-red lips twist into a satisfied smile. Terrified by the eerie sight, she turned on her heel and ran away. Some distance away, she took turned to look back. But the woman was gone. The statues were stolen 50 years ago, so it wasn't that woman, but... I doubt it's that easy to find headless Buddha statues. I'm sure she must know something. I asked Hanayome where the sta statues stolen from each shrine were. And now there's an unexpected lead. What a strange coincidence. If you can find those stolen statues and honor them at the inch shrine, the divine wrath will be quelled, and you might be freed from the mark. You know, it is funny. There are, there are like, like this whole idea, right? That like, I gotta find the thing to quell the spirit or the divine wrath. It is very similar to how Paranormal Site sort of had handled their thing too, where I had to find essentially the one who cast the curse on to begin with, right? Another way that might possibly allow me to escape my mark. It's worth looking into, at least. Oh, before I forget, you should take these, too. Documents on the Hasegawa case that we found after you left. Read through them if you want. It is almost dawn. We must end today's investigation. Please rest. Thank you very much, mister. Because of you, I think I'll get to go see my dad, too. You need to go somewhere to see him. My mom and dad got divorced. Uh, oh. Yeah. Mom decided that she wanted to become a nun. She started taking me to temples and a lot of secret areas. Dad didn't like that, and he started seeing some other lady. I, I understand. You don't have to say more. I guess he's just been embroiled in the world of adults for a while already. Maybe that's why she's so brave while being so young. I asked mom to tell me where dad is, but... She wouldn't say. She told me he's bewitched by a demon and to forget him. So that's why I wanted to ask Hanayome where Dad is. I, I see. I hope you get to see him. Me too. Okay. Good night. I'm really in your debt. Hey, it's thanks to you that Suzu was saved. Thanks so much. Shut up, get out of here. He's, he's more worried about her than himself. His appearance, personality, and job all make him suspicious, but that one thing is clear. 
I know she asked me to, but I was the one who brought her out there after all. So if something happened to her, I... I, I just... <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. Hey, are you alright? I'm so glad she's okay. The hot tears streaming down his face are those of relief, apparently. You should head to bed for today. I'm sure you're tired, right? Yeah. Thanks. Good night. Ah! Holy shit. I'm heading to bed soon myself. My mark's finally gone. I think I'm going to sleep well tonight. There's no reason for you to stay any longer. You're right about that. I'll be leaving tomorrow. See ya, bitch! Sorry, but even nine lives wouldn't be enough to survive staying here. You said it. But I'm grateful for all this, too. It gave me time to rethink my life. Ironic, isn't it? If I hadn't been cursed by a spirit, I'd be in that forest right about now. Chrissy smiles, turns wry. Well, I'm off to bed. Good night. Where's your wishing me luck, huh? What about me and my bullshit? Now then, Lord Ishiki, please find me when you are ready. Farewell. Yes, farewell. I'm going to stand here and think about things now. Truth behind H Hanayome, other. Interesting. That la this this one's actually this one was di very different from the uh, the first two that we had, in that we kind of got most of the information about what this spirit was like, really made clear to us, right? Like pretty early on and throughout it. Whereas the other two felt a little more like you really had to interpret the story. This one just kind of straight up told us, you know? But it really wasn't much to us. It even told us that that body was likely her fiance and that the songs were intended for her. But like I said, even at the end there, I mean, we really wasn't even much choice to be had. It was just like, hey, pick the right song. And that was it. Which is why I'm still unsure, like, I mean, did I even have any items for this one? I mean, I had the instant camera and the dog collar and then this. I don't know how I could have messed this one up. E this was easily the the easiest of the of the spirits so far. Funny enough, I don't know. Almost it almost it's so much so different from the other ones, and I almost wish you feel like maybe it, I don't know some parts of it got cut out because it also feels shorter than the other ones too. I think the other two were like quite a bit longer than this one was. That's why I'm kind of like, oh, it's over. I do think this one was interesting, but I kind of wish it went a little longer to be honest. Felt, I just felt like it went too, a little too fast. Truth behind Hanayome. Might have all started with the lingering grudge caused by the tragic event. Hanayome was likely Seiko Hasegawa. She became a spirit obsessed with eyes in imitation of her fiancé's revenge. The dog turned into that thing in an effort to save them. The info I got from a fellow mark bearer points to that as well. Her fiancé was a musician known as YMN back then. He made a name for himself by cross-mixing genres into his music from rock and pop to classical and techno. Around the time of the incident, he had been working on a new album. The last song on it was My Holy, and just dedicated to his fiance. But in the end, the album was published without the final track. The song and her fiance's love finally reached Seiko. I like to think it's because of us and uh, Genta. I hope their tragic tale has finally come to a close, but some things still don't add up. How did Hanayome suddenly get the power to bestow the mark? The answer might lie with the Buddhist statue stolen from a shrine. The files in the garage mention the Buddha statues were stolen from each shrine 50 years ago, right during the period of chaos following the end of the war. It's their connection. What's more, a year-old interview says someone witnessed a woman in white carrying a headless Buddha statue on the street called Manhole Road. Maybe I should look into that next. All right then, well, uh, still pretty early, so I think we'll, uh, let's keep going. Good night. Bye, Mary. All right, that was a pretty good one. I, I, I actually did enjoy it. I just, again, I wish it went a little longer. It just felt a little like, like I was like, shit, I hit the end already. I really didn't gather much items and stuff. It was just, I, I felt like the, <laughs> I don't know. I, I was expecting it now. I, I, I thought the further I got in, the harder some of these mysteries would get to solve. But this one was weirdly enough, the easiest of them all. Um, It's been three days since Hanayome. All the other Mark Bears left the mansion. I'm the only one here now. I wonder when I'll be free of this Mark. When can I leave this place? And when am I going to clean Sayakusha's blood off the fucking floor? <sighs> it's not even a scrap of meaningful information around. I look around Sayakusha's bedroom to try and find something Mary man mentioned. It's implied to rummage through a woman's things, but I don't have the luxury to not do it. Especially when she's fucking dead. I searched every inch of the room, even under the carpet, but I came up empty. 
I gotta stick my hand right there in her giblets. Seeing the dry blood on the floor reminds me of that horrifying sight I saw. Plants! I don't want to die like that. That sole reason has been my driving force of my struggle to survive since that day. But how long can I keep this up? That thought fills me with such dread that it feels like my legs could give out. After searching everywhere I can, I leave the bedroom. Go downstairs and Mary's making me eggs! The desert deserted entrance hall feels colder than usual. Thinking on it, it's already been over a week since I first came here. I've gotten completely used to this strange mansion. It's not really something I want to admit. Hi! Hi. How do you do, Lord Shiki? Mary gives me her usual greeting in her monotone voice. She's still a complete mystery. Though I can't say I'm not grateful to have someone to talk to now that everyone's gone. Where the fuck's Machida at? Damn it! He didn't let me his number! Did you locate the master key? No, I didn't. I see. I was sure that it would be there. I've searched every accessible inch of the mansion and found no info of value. All that's left is the locked room. I'm trying to find the Kuja Mansion master key so I can open it. May I just fucking kick that shit down? Mary says she said it might be in Seiya Kujo's bedroom, but clearly was a bust. It is obvious I should have spoken with Lady Seiya more or before she died. I deeply apologize. Her voice carries a hint of sadness. She almost seems human when she does that. Look more closely at her. I'm struck all over again by just how strange she is. I haven't really thought about it lately since I've been struggling to survive, but... How did she come into existence? Hey, Mary. Were you made by Saya Kujo? No. I have served the Kujo family since before Lady Saya was born. I was already here at the mansion when I opened my eyes for the first time. They say tools used for many years can come to house deities or souls. I may be something similar. So you're like a Kujo guardian deity? That is an exaggeration. Though I would be very pleased if I could achieve such a status. Lady Saya's fate was much most unfortunate. I will do my utmost to respect her wish to save all who bear the mark. Her clear green eyes stare at me. Lord Ishiki, thanks to you, many mark bearers have been saved. I am sure that Lady Saya would be extremely grateful to you. I very much feel the same way. Her voice is emotionless, but it sounds just a bit softer than usual. Her face cannot show it, but it feels like she's trying to express her gratitude. Now, Lord Ishiki, it seems a new mark bearer has made their way to the mansion. Hope we can find some clue as to the spirit that gave you your mark. Oh god, who is it this time? Or she can even Watch me fucking machine again. Hey, look who's back. I know I did it again. Ah, uh, fuck me. <laughs> Just can't catch a break. Ah, oh, my dude. Yay. We can hang out again. Before she can even finish her sentence, there's a knock at the front door. Uh. What the fuck? Abuki, is that you? A girl bounces in wearing a fancy outfit. I blink dumbfoundedly at her appearance. Nice to meet you. Good morning. It's the middle of the night. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm used to saying it as a greeting. Um, so Dr. Kujo lives here, right? Madam Yus Yasuoka told me to come. Is Dr. Saya around? She's fucking dead. I killed her. Madam Yasuoka. Yep, no clue who that is. Sorry, but Saya Kujo isn't here. I'm Kazuo y Yashiki. I guess you can say I'm representing her right now. Are you here about the scar? I can help. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. It's actually called the mark, right? If you get it, your memories become a mess and you die soon after. That's what Madam y Yasuoka said. She says with very little uh, fear in her voice. Well, color me surprised. I don't think anyone besides Saya Kujo knew about the mark. But this girl, she knows what happened to her. For some reason, she doesn't look depressed at all. Aren't you scared? Yeah, I'm terrified, but being a scaredy cat's embarrassing. And for a bunch of bitches, I want to hurry and fix this whole mark thing for my fans, too. I'm a pro, and forgetting the lyrics up on stage is a definite no-go. 
I think I know what line of work she's in. <laughs> she's a comedian, a model, and I, uh, I, uh, fuck it, an idol. Are you an idol or something? Yeah, that's right. I mean, to be fair, a model, a model and an idol is not too different in Japan. Oh, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Ai Kashiwagi. I sing, dance, and perform as a member of Love and Hero. Oh, so that's your stage costume. Yeah, cool, right? I had it here straight after filming finished. If I got into my dressing room, my manager would have found me. The taxi driver stared at my outfit the whole way here. Giggling, she removes her jacket and bares her shoulder. A familiar mark glares bright from her skin. I'm stuck wearing sleeves right now because of that's this thing. And it's gonna be summer soon. And oh yeah, I'm also gonna die. <laughs> it seems as though this person is indeed a mark bearer. What? Who's there? Eyes by uh, eyes, 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 eyes. Bug out co comically wide when she hears a female voice out of nowhere. She may know about the mark, but it doesn't look like she knows about Mary. Mary updates I about everything so far. <laughs> Yet again, she's like, God, I'm so sick of fucking ex exposing this shit to you motherfuckers. She starts with Sai Kujo's tragic death and recounts her our encounters with the spirits. I seem surprised to hear Kujo is dead. But she does admirably well in her attempt to swallow this string of unusual events. Now, Lady I, do you have any idea as to where you received your mark? Mm, probably. When we filmed at the mystery spots. I don't think I had this scar until after we finished up filming. I feel like I should ask her more for more details about this mystery spot tour. What kind of show was it? A summer ghost story special. During the shoot, our guest star, Madam Yasuoka, and I got this weirdly shaped scar. Oh, she did too? Well, you should have told her to come over here. The minute she saw it, Madam Yas Yasuoka told me it was called a mark. So I wasn't the only one to get it one. It's Yasuoka also got the mark. Is this person not coming here then? Oh, I guess I forgot to say. Madam Yasuoka is on her way too. She'll just be a little late. She's stopping by her shop in Giza before heading over. Oh. She asked next. Where'd you go? Went around to three mystery spots that are rumored to be haunted. One was an old tunnel in O City. Another was a railroad crossing in T City where a lot of accidents happened. Damn, it's gonna be really hard to get around this fucking place when every when the names of the cities are all just like random fucking letters. The last was a back street in H City. Sure enough, H City was one of the places. Which I asked next. When'd you notice it? Mm, we were rushing everywhere because we were pressed for a time that day. It just was suddenly there. Well, that's not much help. I guess all I will give from her. You mentioned the street needs city, but where exactly was it? Oh, um, ah, sick. I digs her cell phone out of her bag and flips it open. I'm pretty sure it was in an email my manager sent me. Oh, there it is. Uh, it was K Miyamachi North Road. It was a pretty weird place. A ton of manholes were all over. Manholes! K Miyamachi wrote North Road. The file on the ground said a woman holding a Buddha statue was seen there. Is just a coincidence, or... Is it fucking destiny? Hey, you're kind of frowning. Is something wrong? Oh, no, it's just... <sighs> just, you, you have no idea, right? I've been through a lot. Doing, been doing this shit for a while now. This seems we have determined where you must go tonight. Please head directly to K. Miyamachi North Road, Lord Ishiki. There may be a spirit trace there. It's not the only thing I might find. There may be a clue about who stole the Buddha statue from a shrine, too. And of course, I'll come with. Our group has a song that goes like this. I'm not the one to sit around and wait. I'll blast through those evil traps that's standing in my way with all my might. That didn't even rhyme. Uh, okay. Sounds like Love and Hero specialize in the motivational type of song. Anyway, she seems willing enough, so I'll let her help. Let's see what uh, your stats are. Funny enough, you have more power than fucking Yashiki here? 
Uh, less intelligence and spirit and dexterity the same. Uh, star member of the current popular idol group Love and Hero. Her sense of justice is strong. And she despises anything that's twisted. She's an accomplished pianist who's skilled enough to sing and play simultaneously. All right, what other face do you have? Oh wait, it's it's the I think I already see it. Yeah, it was it was, it was that one. Yeah. So yeah, every character just has two portraits: normal portrait and then some form of freaked out, angry, or crying. <laughs> Seems Lady I got her mark of K. Miyamachi North Road. I do not know what spirit cursed her, but there may be traces of it there. Would you try investigating? By the way, Mary, do you know anyone named Yasuoka? She was supposedly in contact with Sayakujo. No, I do not know that name. I do not have full knowledge of Lady Saya's circle of friends. But if it had to do with the mark, shouldn't she have brought it up with you? I am sure that Lady Saya had a good reason not to, to mention it. It is impossible to know now. Hmm. All right, hop on the bike, girl. We're going to North Road. Watch out for manholes. <laughs> Damn, that is a lot of manholes. The road runs runs through a quite residential area. It's far removed from major crossroads, so it's totally deserted this time of night. We look a little suspicious wandering around, but no one's here to report us. Ah, uh, yep. This is the place. We were looking for a ghost here. Wouldn't have to be a woman. Wearing white, carrying a statue, would it? Actually, yeah. That was the rumor. I don't really remember the statue bit. So, did you find the ghost? No, we didn't. But Madame Yasuoka said she felt a bad presence throughout the entire shoot. You keep mentioning Yasuoka. What kind of person is she? Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention. She is a famous fortune teller. Her predictions often come true. They say she's got true spiritual powers. This fortune teller knew about the mark. Maybe she was working with Sai Kujo. Oh yeah, better, I better email her. I've got to let her know about you and what happened to Dr. Saya. I pushed some buttons on her phone. Cell phones are getting pretty common now. In 10 years, everyone will probably own one, old and young alike. You have no idea. Technology evolves so fast. It's amazing. Sorry that it took so long. All right, should we get right down to investigating Mr. Yashiki? If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Uh, okay. Manholes? An old manhole cover. Looks like we need a special tool to open it. Huh? This one's got a different design. It's true. It's the only one of the older make. It's covered in rust. Huh, looks like you can get a, get a hand in. Can you lift it? I highly doubt it. I'm sure you need a special tool to open a manhole. Well, why not just try it? Determination and strength will get you farther than you expect. Is that from another of your songs? Come on, Mr. Shiki. You take that side. Okay, okay. One, two, three! Bah! The little lifts and a putrid smell wafts out. Can't believe we actually got it open. Smells like doo doo. The black void stretches deep underground. Fucking imagine going in a fucking manhole in the middle of the goddamn night. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm gonna go down straight, take a tunnel straight down to fucking hell. The rest of metal ladder is set into the side of the hole. Does this connect to the sewers? No, it connects to hell. Are we listening? Actually, it doesn't smell like it does. Weird. And the rumor about the white robed woman, the woman mysteriously vanishes. Could it be that she hid herself down here? With a fucking Buddha statue. Why don't we try going down for a look? What? Are you serious? But I'm in my stage outfit. So you're gonna wait up here? N no, I'm coming. But don't you dare look up while you're climbing down. You can just go first. No, you're my meat shield. Damn it. A go down first and I quickly follows. The rest of the ladder creaks when we put our weight on it. That doesn't make me nervous at all. We make our way carefully. It takes us a while to reach the bottom. I feel like this must go farther down than a normal sewer. It's like a secret entrance. Maybe for a secret society's hideout. I's voice bounces off the walls above me. She's probably jerking around to stop herself from freaking out. My feet finally reach solid ground. Freaky. A 
Concrete passageway thrusts before us. It has been ventilated in a long time. Dang, hear that ambience there? The musty air is stagnant and heavy. It gets suddenly difficult to breathe. Definitely doesn't look like a sewer. This my outfit won't get dirty. But where are we anyway? How should I know? We'll just have to look around. If I climb the ladder, I can get above ground. There's actually a path up ahead, too. At least to a dead end. Hello there. Large iron box. Just from its corrosion, it must have been made a long time ago. I slip my hand underneath the lid and pull with all my might. Pops up with an unexpectedly loud noise. There are a few tools inside, along with what looks like a notebook. Nice! Hammer, hatchet, and red notebook. Wow, it's full of stuff. What does the notebook say? I flip through the notebook with eye. The lettering is very fine. It's impossible to read in such a dark place. But what concerns me even more is... What's that smell? A bizarre stench invades my nose, like a mix between tallow, perfume, and blood. It does it take me long to figure out that it's coming from the notebook? Ugh. I can't believe you're holding it. Could you maybe put it away? I think I might puke. I put the notebook in my bag for now. The smell might permeate the other items, but some sacrifices are necessary. A hammer found in the shelter. The head is what looks like ha has what looks like blood stains. It was obviously used for something other than carpentry. Uh, a hatchet. It's thick. It's thick blood. <laughs> Typo. It's covered in rust. Dark red stains hinted at its history as, as a tool used to sever something. A notebook found in the shelter is covered in strange smelling splotches, making it hard to read. The clean pages of entries have been written with thin letters. Huh. So there's like a passage there, like a secret door. Okay. <laughs> Fucking fuck you, game. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I suddenly. <laughs> Stupid jump scare piece of mother. Ah. I'm like, I'm like already on edge. I'm like, oh, God damn it, I don't like this. I suddenly shrieks pitifully and stops in her tracks. Mr. Shiki, what, what is that? She shakily points and I shine the light that way. What? Ooh. Something dark and long is clinging to the wall. Is it hair? Is that human hair? But what's it doing here? How'd you even see that shit anyway in the dark? What the fuck in hell? Ew. Pubes, bro. Any more hair? I see no ha no more hair. Oh wait. The wall's been discolored by water stains and dust. Going by the fitting, it's gotta be old. It's an old-fashioned, though well-built iron door. The ping is chipping in places, so it must be pretty old. Whoa, that door looks ancient. I had no idea there was a place like this under the ground. Oh, could this be some kind of lab? Actually, you say stuff like that with a straight face. Sure, innocent, innocence is cute, but I get the feeling she's not particularly bright. I I'm sorry, did I say something bad? No, it's not that. I give up an eye and reach for the doorknob. It's locked. Of course it is. Let's go. I don't want to stay here long, so... I never get to finish what I'm saying. <laughs> Boom! What the fu- Oh, it's just some fucking crazy homeless guy. <laughs> he comes out and goes, Boom! Boom, bitch! An old man jumps out from the iron door yelling strangely. Hey, where are you folks from? What are you doing on my turf, huh? He's smirking, but his tone is serious. Just then I smell an odd stench. Alcohol? It seems this old man is a homeless guy who's been living down here. You been touching my hair collection? Uh, nothing really. Th that's right. We haven't done anything. I know she's trying to back me up, but she definitely doesn't sound convincing. 
This underground shelter is in a place for irresponsible layabouts like yourself. Understand? So leave my turf alone and get out of here. Or I'll eat you. He disappears behind the iron door. It sounds like he's carefully locked it up again. Man, that surprised me. Was he expecting a person to come out? Oh, do you think that guy was homeless? Yeah. Maybe not something you ponder out loud, though. Could it be she's never seen one before? Still, that old man. Why did he just pop out to warn us? If the door is locked, then he shouldn't have to worry about it being disturbed. Yeah. But if I don't know why, then I should probably just do as he says. Let's go. He might come yell at us again. Yeah. We've seen just about everything we can. It seems to be an underground shelter. But with the solid concrete walls, it's not quite like your standard shelter. Well, we didn't find anything on spirits or that woman in a white robe. But we got a hatchet. Heck yeah! At least the notebook shows some promise. Too bad we can't get more out of that old guy. What's we'll out that door anyway? I'm gonna use my hatchet to break it down. For the moment we entered the shelter, it's been hard to breathe. Like there's a noose tying around my neck. I thought it was because of the still air, but that might not be the only reason. Something in my head throbs. This place you knows some kind of horrible secret. I'm all sure of it. Do I, somehow, know this underground shelter? Mr. Yoshiki? You're kind of spacing out. You okay? You look pale, too. Mmm. Ooh, this might be promising. If you know about it, then maybe this is actually tied to a spirit that is, uh, that did cast, uh, the mark on you. Or mark on us. I I'm fine. It's nothing. The air is pretty bad. I'm surprised you're feeling sick. Let's head back up for now. We return to the entrance and climb the rickety ladder. <laughs> I thought I was gonna break on our way up or something. We climb out of the manhole, the breeze that brushes my cheek is refreshing. The unpleasant air that hounded us underground starts to disperse. Ah, oh, Miss I, I finally found you. It's gotta be Yako or whatever, right? Oh, hello! Oh! Wow, okay, all right. That is definitely a fortune teller looking ass old lady fortune teller. I'm glad to see you all safe. Oh, Madam Yasuoka! Good morning! Great to see you. But what are you doing here? I went to Miss Kusha's mansion, but no one answered the door. I then got your email, so I came here. Still, it's hard to believe that Miss Kusha has passed away. It seems to be the woman that I keeps mentioning. Thick layers of makeup make it hard, but going by her voice, she must be pretty old. I'm Jowako Yasuoka. You must be Mr. Yashiki. I read about you and your mark in Miss I's email. It seems you've been working hard to help those who have the mark. Yasuoka, how much you know about the mark? Good question. I'm sure I know less than what you are hoping I do. Miss Kusha told me about a scar like that and asked me asked what I knew of it. Oh. That's unfortunate. I was hoping for more. I assume it's some sort of curse. Though I never thought it would be the work of an inhuman spirit. There's our second expression. Or that I would become a victim. Yasuko rolls up her sleeve, revealing the mark on her arm. Someone's gonna have one on their ass, right? They're, they pull down their pants and spread their ass cheeks open and show us the mark right between their butthole. You're like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. Why is that the place to pick? It's super weird, right? I've lived long enough already. I have no attachments to this world. But Miss I is still young. Do everything you can to save her. I can't promise anything, but I'll try. I'll need your help as well. I heard you have spiritual spiritual powers. Mr. Yashiki, don't sound so suspicious. I don't care about spirits or ghosts. She's definitely the real deal. <sighs> it's naturally be doubtful. It's best to not tangle with spirits if you want to live in peace. However, Mr. Yashiki, you seem to have some spiritual powers of your own. Have you experienced something no one else has? Mysterious voice I hear every so often when it comes to mind. I mentioned it to her. Hmm, intriguing. Jean d'Arc was 
famous for hearing the voice of God, but usually it's only spirit whispers. It may be an evil spirit, or ghost, or even the soul of someone who loves you trying to save you. If it's trying to help, I'd appreciate if it could give clear hits. <laughs> I could do nothing about that. Humans and souls live separately. Imagine a long distance radio signal. Static can gobble the message. A soul protecting the one it loves. Ah, how romantic. Mr. Shiki, do you have any idea who that soul could be? There's no way I would. I don't have any memories, remember? Even if I did, it's like there's a way that I'd be able to know. So, what's your plan now? Well, uh, first, I, I, the thing I really want to know is... Why are you holding your arms like that, lady? I glued them together like this. Why? Because the spirits beat me so! Oh, okay. We're going to head to the back to the mansion. We need to report to Mary, after all. Oh, and who might that be? Oh, God, here we go again. A doll? Well, it talks, even. Oh, okay, cool. Hmm, a talking doll. Not so strange, would you consider it's the Kujo family we're discussing? She's not surprised at all. Gets space to specialize in the supernatural sometimes. Shall we head to the mansion? I'm intrigued by this Mary. Let's, ma'am. As Yasuoka climbs out of the car, her gaze turns nostalgic as she looks around. It's been a long time. About 20 years now. Back two generations of family heads. You've known them a long time, then. <laughs> It hasn't been that long. I had a falling out with Murasame, the last, the second last head, and cut ties with them. They didn't even invite me to Murasame's funeral. The last head, Masamu, and Seiya were the kids the last time I saw them. What the fuck? Why are they, they have the names of swords? I matched my surprise when Sai Seiya contacted me a month ago. Wait a second. First it was Murasame, then Masamu. And the current head is Saya uh, Kujo, right? There have been three heads in 20 years? That's right. Yasuoka grimaces. The family is known for their short lives. Accidents or heart attacks? Or plants growing out of them? Very few have lived full lives. Gossip says their family is cursed. So Saya Kujo didn't escape that fate either. It's probably just coincidence, but there's something about this mansion that tells me I shouldn't be so sure. If it really is a curse, what's causing it? Could it be Divine Wrath? Divine Wrath! Ah, oh, Miss I. You've been staring this whole time. Something the matter? Uh, well, there's something. Um, Miss Yoshiki, does the Kujo family keep animals out in their yard? No, I don't think so. Oh. Then that black rabbit is odd. Oh, that fucking rabbit again! The rabbit's back again. What is it doing here? Where to go? I think it was headed for the building. It has something in its mouth. What was it? I don't know. It's too dark and it was far away. You know that rabbit, Mr. Shiki? Kind of. I tell them about the black rat of a scene of my investigations. Mary said that it has some sort of spirit residing in it. And now it's suddenly here. What could that mean, I wonder? All at once, my heart starts pounding. I have a bad feeling about this. Like something terrible is about to happen. I find myself bolting in the entrance hall. Everyone looks the same as usual here. Did the rabbit get inside the mansion? I quickly scan the room for it. Oh! Mary is sitting on the sofa. Uh-oh! Mr. Ishiki, over there in the corner. I turn in the direction I is pointing. Um, what's going on? I's voice is an audible shake in it. How the hell should I know? I have to force the words out of my mouth. My voice shakes like hers. Yasuoka is silent. Oh no! Ooh. Mary lies on the ground, tragically broken. Ooh! Ooh. Yeah, Jimbo's inside you too? Ooh! Damn! You got messed up, Mary! Oh my god! Her beautiful face smashed to pieces.
Next to her lies the rabbit. Its head is twisted unnaturally. Flesh, fresh blood stains the floor. Oh! Oh, I didn't even see the rabbit. It blended in so much. Ew. Hey, Mary? I call out to her during to hope. But I only get silence in response. Ooh. Oh no, my like one ally. And I actually I guess the bunny too. It's like the bunny was trying to help us. Ooh. Mary's dead. Though I don't know if you say that for a doll. After that, I and Yasu Oka help me pick up Mary's remains as well as the rabbits. We work in complete silence, no one daring to speak a word. Mary is gone. I'll have to face spirits in the mark without her help from now on. Terror and dread threaten to consume me. Will I even be able to hunt down spirits like I've been doing? What the hell happened here? Some sort of spirit do this. We know Kujo Mansion isn't necessarily safe from spirit attacks. In fact, Sayakuja was killed by Hanahiko. Why did the rabbit come here? The last time I saw it was at a shrine. Did it travel all the way here after that? And for what purpose? Mr. Yashiki, a moment please. I found this while cleaning up. Do you have any idea what it is? She has me a key ring with a single key on it. Oh god, is it the master key? The tag attached to it says, Master key, there it is. It's the master key to the mansion. But what's it doing here? Besides, it say the rabbit had something in its mouth earlier. Oh. It could have picked up this key ring and carried it. Are you saying the rabbit had the master key? It's only a guess. It's also quite possible that Mary had it herself. But Mary says she didn't know where it was. The truth is shrouded in darkness. The key is a key to open up any room in the mansion, right? Is there a place you want to get into? As a matter of fact, there is. There's one place I've been unable to check. The locked room in the southeast corner of the second floor. Got tools on the wall over there. The room layout looks no different from the other guest rooms. What are those tools on the desk? They look pretty strange. That frame over there interests me. I'd like to see the photos inside. There are two places of interest. Which one should I check first? Desk. On the desk is a board lined with tools. There's a variety of sharp chisels and long tools that look like spatulas all in a row. Next to them are bottles filled with paints and a stack of art books. What exactly were they making? Are just painting shit? <laughs> the desk drawers are full of tools as well. But no documents or reports on the mark like I had hoped. Hmm? I picks up a chisel and studies his handle. Oh, like a... Like a stone, uh... Like a carver? Or like a statue, uh... Carver? This is the same thing! MK is engraved on it. Sayakuja would be SK, so... So his father was Murasame Kujo. And her older brother, the head before her, was Masamune Kuso. Either one would be MK. I, 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 that was me saying that. Yasuko tilts her head in thought. I heard the Kusho family ancestors were tasked with making Buddha statues. I suppose either of them could have been influenced by that. That's about all we learned from this desk. Check the next the next spot. The picture frame contains several photos. Marionettes, wax figures, Japanese dolls. Uh, maybe these tools were also used to potentially uh, make Mary. They're all photos of dolls. And one of them is, yeah. A photo of Mary's bare frame. Looks like she was still being put together. Oh, she has a mark on her arm. So the tools in the desk are used to make dolls. Then was Mary created here in the mansion? There's a pattern on Mary's right arm. Isn't that the mark? But... Never saw anything like that in her arm. Maybe they painted over it. Plus, this one is a different color from the one of us mark bearers have. Black mark. Ours may be red, but somehow this feels even more ominous. 
After examining the desk and the frame, we searched the rest of the room as well. But we come up with nothing more. Ah, uh, that's too bad. This would be an amazing secret. We didn't learn anything more about the spirits or the mark here. The only thing left is that diary found the shelter. We'll just have to place all our bets on that. We return to the entrance hall. I pulled the red notebook out of the bag I left on the floor. The flower in the town of smell assaults my nose. I feel like my olfactory senses are sh shriveling. What a vulgar stench. Recognize this from the wind we filmed, K. Miyamachi North Road. It was only a brief whiff of it, so I thought I'd imagine the smell. But perhaps that's when I received. Yes, yeah, so she scowls in the notebook. If she's right, then this notebook could be connected to the spirit somehow. Inside is the contents of a woman's diary. It almost seems like it was soaked in a pool of perfume. Stains and discolorations make most of the pages unreadable. But the last page seems clean enough. The date is from half a month ago. Chapter 4, Miss Zoo. Oh, that's so fucking freaky. Ooh, you see her back there. I'm just barely through the door. Ooh. Is it back at the school again? As I awaited the fate, today I recalled my days as a teacher. The children called me Miss Sue. Zoo, the keeper of the animals. Probably because I kept so many laboratory animals in the science lab. I got to be surrounded by my beloved animals. My cute little snakes. It was so much more fulfilling than my current boring research. But because of that foolish principle in the fire, the school was shut down. My paradise was stolen from me. I need to take my back my paradise. The great Ashura has bestowed upon me the wisdom I needed to do that. Tomorrow, I will die. By the great Ashura's splendid Miss Mercy, I will be reborn as Miss Sue. So I may rebuild my paradise again. It is all as the great Ashura has said. Oh, great Ashura. Ashura, 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 Ashura. What the fuck? So you want to turn into some crazy demon spirit? The rest of the page is filled with Azura. Did she lose her sanity while writing it? Traces of kiss marks cover the names. That combined with the choking perfume. The heavy weight of lust is overwhelming. She wants to fuck this god. The dog passed his notebook. Thoroughly disgusting. I'd love to burn it to ash immediately. So this Miss Sue who wrote this, could she be the woman from the rumors? She worked in a lab that would explain the white robe. But I wonder what school she was talking about. She said it was her paradise. Do you have any ideas? H Elementary? Yes, I agree. So they would abandon school in this area that hasn't been torn down. Yeah, we really back there again it's the same place? Interesting. Why, why don't we run to her last time we were there, then? Wait. Oh. The second floor was covered in snakes. That was her doing. Oh, that was not Hanahiko. Which actually makes sense. I mean, when you think about it, thinking back to it, you'd be like, the snakes don't really have anything to do with plants. Like, why were there snakes on the second floor? Oh. Well, isn't that interesting? Maybe the paradise she wrote of. If what the diary says is true, then the woman died if she wrote it. This great Ashura would gu have guided her transformation to Miss Sue. Can't believe a human would choose to become a spirit of their own free will. It's not really possible. She seemed fairly confident that she would be reborn, and the notebook being in the shelter might serve as a supporting evidence. Perhaps she meant as a farewell to her life as a human. How sentimental. Miss Sue. So is she the one that gave Madame y Yasuoka and her eye her marks? That's where we found the diary, so the spirit must know the place. It would make sense that it come, comes and goes from there then. For whatever reason. It looks like we know where we must go next. Time to go to each elementary yet again! Tragedy of the Kujo Mansion. We'll come back to the mansion to a shocking scene. Mary is cruelly smashed to pieces and the black rabbit lies in a pool of blood. We only stand there in horrified silence. What was the rabbit doing here? Why did both of them die? 
There are guides or spiritual advisors. How in the world am I supposed to face spirits now? While cleaning the while cleaning, Yasuoka finds the master key to the mass to the mansion. I guess the black rabbit had it for whatever reason. Regardless, let us enter the locked room. Inside we discover that either Masamune or Murasame, former heads of the Kuja family, likely made Mary, but unfortunately we found nothing on spirits or the mark like like we hoped. We found a fascinating notebook in the underground shelter. I and Yasuoka say the smell something similar when they were filming on the manhole road. The notebook appears to be some teacher's diary and the legible parts are indescribably bizarre. Tomorrow I will die and by the greater Jura's abundant mercy I will be reborn as Miss Zhu. Miss Zhu. That was the nickname of the teacher who kept a lot of lab animals. The abandoned school that's become her lab could be H Elementary. The spirit who gave I and Yasuoka their marks on Manhole Road and the woman in white who was seen carrying a Buddha statue. If they were both Miss Zhu, we need to find out who she is. We have to search H Elementary yet again. Yasuoka, a famous fortune teller, she, ha she has a store in the best part of Ginza. Her clients even include politicians. She uses her spiritual powers with her knowledge to give advice, which has gained many devotees. Tone deaf, the only thing she's bad at is music. And making this face. Well, all right, guys. I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. Ooh, this shit's getting good, man. Our ally is dead. Somehow. I guess you can't kill an inanimate doll. I mean, I've been playing Lies of P a lot lately, so you know. I guess that checks out. But I don't think she's going to be revi reviving at the nearest Stargazer. But I like this. It's, it's sort of setting up stakes, right? Shows that this maybe is a spirit uh, that uh, you don't want to fuck around with. And the fact that seemingly Yashiki also recognizes that area down there kind of makes me think that he... This could be one of the spirits or be tied to the spirit that he got his mark from, you know? But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoy this episode. If it is, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already. Become a picky penguin aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.